Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this fine Christmassy theme tune. I'm going to turn the music down a bit. There it goes. Okay, so I have something different to show today. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it. Um, so first of all, um, we're doing Chorus, the new Chorus extension that's come out. It's not a Chorus root extension, it's a, a locomotive pack. So you can Chorus number five, little diesel loco here. Looks amazing, Some details incredible. And then you've got Chorus number nine, which I think is the smallest loco in Train Simulator. Um, so it's a little battery loco. So we're going to do a couple of scenarios on Chorus number five. And we're going to do a um, at least one on Chorus number nine. And then we're going to go and have a look at the last scenario on um, um, on Doodad on uh, GP40. So, um, oh no! Look, Ed. Look, look, Ed. Oh no! How are you feeling, Ed? Is that feeling good? <laughs> right. Okay. Apparently, people called Edward fail. <laughs> Oh, you know it's so easy to tease Ed. Right, so what am I going to show you? What have I done differently? So what I've done differently is I'm not going to drive this with a steering wheel. This loco has a clutch. And because it's got a clutch... You wait. <laughs> I will have revenge. <laughs> because it's got a clutch, I thought to myself, hmm, self. Didn't actually say that, but never mind. Um... I could use the G27, because I've got under my desk at all times, I've got a accelerator perm brake and clutch, and I thought, I beat the mods on a regular basis, Mo uh, Moggy, you know that. <clears throat> Where did my stick go? Right, um, so, yeah, so what I've done is I've hooked up the um, the G27 um, so that the um, accelerator pedal operates the throttle, brake pedal operates the brake, clutch pedal operates the clutch. Gear lever over here. Uh, let me just move move the camera. Let me put, I'll put this camera somewhere so it can at least see the gear lever because I don't think anyone really wants the camera on the floor so they can you know see my gear, my pedals being operated. That's, I don't know, maybe you do want that. Good evening, Chris. How are you? Right, let me see if I can get this other camera on so that you can at least see the gear lever. Do do do. I did this, you know, like many things, I did this as a giggle, and it turned out to actually be a really cool way of driving the loco. So, you see the gear lever here. So, what I've the gear, there's two gears, you've got forwards and backwards. So, if you put it in what is gear lever one, that means forwards in, in low speed. And then, if I put it in what is gear three, it means forward in high speed. Yeah, and then this is reverse low, and then this is reverse high. So, um, and then combined with the clutch. So, let's go ahead and do Chorus 5 introduction, um, and we'll see how we get on. So, I have literally only just set this up just before the stream. That's why we're a little bit on the late side. But um, let's start with the introduction and see how we get on. But if you haven't got this pack yet, oh my word. I mean, if you're interested in high-speed trains, this just is not the pack for you. But so good good morning driver today we will hopefully <laughs> teach you how to drive chorus number five chorus number five is a simplex diesel shunter and has a mechanical transmission it is quite unique and then it ha has a clutch pedal which makes driving it somewhat different than other diesel mechanical locomotives you may be used to isn't that lovely Firstly, the most important control number five is the handbrake. This is the simplest device on the, in that the harder and further you apply it the harder the brake is applied Next control is a reverser with three positions, forwards, reverse, and that's it, basically. It's a pretty standard reverser. Next up is the gear lever, which has two positions, high speed and low speed. Um, the low speed gear has a maximum speed around seven, while the high speed gear has a maximum speed around 14. While coasting, you must ensure the speed does not exceed the gear's maximum to prevent the engine from overspeeding and causing damage. Next control is the throttle, which, you know, pretty much behaves like a throttle. The there are two sanders. We, yeah, we don't do sanders. The locomotive is fitted with an air whistle. So you've got the B key in the space. 
And final the driver control is the clutch. Essentially, the clutch disconnects the engine from the transmission, preventing the engine from stalling when stationary and allowing the gear to be changed more easily. By default, the clutch is fully depressed. So you use the R key and the shift R key to effectively press and release the clutch. And it is an analog control, which is actually really, really nice. This is so, such a nice loco. Uh, to change gear move or, or move the reverse of the throttle should be off and the clutch fully depressed. So tell it something really, really sad before you change the clutch or the throttle. <clears throat> right, before we move off, we should probably go over the starting procedure of this loco because you will likely stall it at some stage or many stages. First, let's stall the engine. Release, we already stalled the engine because I've, I've not got my foot on the clutch, on the pedals. So the engine will cut out, so I've got to wait now. Miley, while we're waiting, let me have a flow round. Look at this. Isn't that lovely? Right, the other unique thing about Chorus 5 is that it does not have an automatic starter. You must crank the engine to start it. When the engine is off, crank handle will appear in its starting slot. To start the engine, we must build up the engine's RPM enough to allow it to fire. Be careful when doing this as the handle has a habit of snatching and you can break your wrist. Please note, in the game, you cannot break your wrist. Just clear, clearing that up. To start the engine, you must repeatedly press a Z key in a repeated, quick, rhythmic fashion until the engine fires up. So let's just check to make sure that it's all working. Yeah, you can see the clutch pedal's working. All right, so now I press another button I've mapped over here. And there we go. Just gotta wait for it to time out now. Turn these sounds up, because it's lovely. Right, hopefully you should have the engine restarted now. Let's get going. We'll start moving. First, we should select forward or the reverser and then release the brake. Open the throttle a bit, say to 20%, and once done, gently release the clutch pedal. You should hear the engine's RPM drop momentarily. Once the clutch is released enough, the loco should start off moving. If the engine revs continue to drop and the locomotive shows no sign of moving, check the reverser is in the correct direction and the gear is at low speed. If both are correct, increase the throttle a bit and hopefully the loco should start moving. Once underway, release the clutch fully and control the speed with the throttle. Right, put it in first. Now we're at sort of getting up to seven. I'm going to clutch down, put it in high. No. There we go. We're going again. Have another look, 4072. No, it's pretty small. <clears throat> That's better. <laughs> I haven't tapped the brakes, so I haven't read it. It's all done via events, so... You can see the throttle maps quite nicely. This is so good. This is so good. I mean, the next scenario I'm going to do, I did it over my lunch break, and my word, it was um, I had so much fun with it. So I'm going to run it again tonight. Alright, coming up to go by a marker. 
So on the joystick interface, oh the whistle. I've got that on the joystick as well. Yeah, I'm gonna show the other one as well, Ed, and don't worry. So the whistle actually is its just literally on the top of the uh, exhaust, isn't it? It just basically drops the exhaust down to make it whistle. Many nice little touches on this, to be honest, Ed. It's probably time to change gear now. Do so, throttle off, depress the clutch, change gear, release the clutch and open the throttle again. If you find yourself slowing down too much on a hill, you may need to change back down. This is a bit late for changing up gear, surely. I will take the throttle off, clutch down, put the brakes on a little bit, get it under seven, All right, put it back in the other gear, just post it on, on low gear. Is there any way of putting this in like neutral? Because I've noticed that it, you always have to have the clutch down. You can't take your foot off the clutch. <laughs> well done, hopefully the scenario has helped you learn a little bit about chorus number five. Right, let's do the shunting scenario, because that's a bit more fun. 